Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to tell you about a little conversation that I had at a family outing this Saturday. We had a little gathering outside a uh, cookout, and uh, one of the family members uh, realized or had heard the rumor that I am a vegan. And now, I, look, I didn't start the conversation, okay? She approached me and came over to me and uh, just walked up and basically said, oh, so I hear that you're vegan. Uh, what made you go vegan? Uh, was it because of a health issue, a health reason? Now, I wrote these notes down because I want to try to stay on course. So my answer to her, um, I just told her, I said, well, it really is uh, best for our health not to consume animal products, meat, milk, eggs, cheese, any of that, and, and if someone is sick, going plant-based will probably cure them of whatever uh, is making them sick and get rid of their health issues. Uh, and so here she repeats it again. She said, so you, you did it for your own health. Uh, what was wrong with you? And again, I told, so this time I tried to be a little bit more clear, and I answered her, and I said, I didn't say that I was sick. I said it was good for our health. It's good for everybody's health. And uh, it does cure people from sickness and disease. And uh, so that wasn't good enough. She asked me, point blank, uh, why I went vegan. So I went on and told her uh, the reason that I made the decision to go plant-based and vegan was because that God had shown me that it was never what he wanted for us. It was never his will. It was man's will. And we put words in God's mouth to make it look like God wants us to eat the animals, that that's their purpose and that he created them for that. But that was absolutely not what God intended for us in the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to just tell you a little more about our conversation. Uh, I told her, I said, I went vegan because God never wanted us to eat animals. That's not what he ever wanted. Uh, and she said, watch this. Now, I've never known out of the 26, 7, 8, maybe 28 years that I've known this individual, I've never even known her to ever talk about God, to ever go to church, or to even profess that she's a Christian, and I never even knew that she owned a Bible, okay? I mean, and I'm not being mean, I'm just saying I've never known out of all the many years that I've known her, almost three decades, uh, for her to even talk about Jesus or the Bible or God. Uh, but watch, when it comes to talking about killing and eating animals. Here's her reply. But God told us to eat the animals. Yes. So I was very kind and I said, I understand that you were probably told this, but no, God never told us to eat the animals. Man decided that's what we wanted to do. So we claim, even through mistranslated scriptures, to make it sound like, and I didn't use this with her, but we verse snatch verses and apply them and twist them to make it sound like God said something that God never really said, okay? Uh, so I told her that. I said, and we claim God told us to. And here she says it one more time. But but it's in the Bible. <laughs> I just love it how people will say, but it's in the Bible. Did you know, I'm going to just take a little uh, sidetrack here. Did you know that slavery and beating a slave is in the Bible? That you can beat a slave within what we would call an inch of their life, but as long as they don't die and they do recover, it's acceptable. That's in your Old Testament, guys, okay? Uh, the Old Testament uh, makes it okay to stone your wife, to uh, divorce your wife. Jesus said that was never the heart of God, that that was in the heart of man. And that's why Moses added divorce into the law, okay? So we know that man has been doing things that God never intended for us to ever do. The Old Testament and the Old Covenant also talks about stoning your own children for being disobedient. Jesus never told anybody to stone their wives. He never stoned the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, although they wanted him to. He never did that. See, he didn't walk by the letter of the law and start using Old Testament scriptures like they did, saying, see, right here it says we can do this. Jesus walked in the spirit of the law, which is love. And he walked in love toward the woman and said, no, I don't condemn you and, and go and sin no more. And neither do, they all left. Okay, I've done a teaching on that. Okay, did you know that in the Bible, David says in a psalm that 
Blessed are the ones who stone the little, who, who bash the heads of little children on the stones. Do you really see Jesus teaching anyone to take little infants and bash their heads on stones until they kill them? Absolutely not. So, see, we verse snatch things and make it sound like God said for us to do it. And in, in truth, uh, a lot of the Old Testament stuff was setting restrictions in place, not expanding people. Uh, like, for instance, the food laws. Did you know in Genesis 9-3, people claim that God said that we could eat every living thing that moves, uh, and I mentioned that to her, and I, and I can get back to that. Uh, and, and I said, and if we looked at it from that perspective, every living thing that moves doesn't mean just animals. It means other human beings. And she just went, well, now we know it don't mean that. And I said, well, obviously some people don't know that. Some cannibalists use that as their defense. God said we could eat any moving, living thing. But here's a contradiction I want to point out to you. Did you know we claim that God said we could eat animals in Genesis 9-3, which by the word, the word animal or creature is not in Genesis 9-3. It says every creeping thing, which means vines that creep and crawl on the ground. Watch, he says, I give you the creeping things just as I have given you the green herbs, okay? The plants. He did expand it to include the vines, things that grew on the ground and crawled across the ground. Now, I want you to think about this. In Genesis 9-3, after God says you can have the vegetation that yields fruit that crawls on the ground, the creeping things, as well as the green herbs, we what we see next, okay, after God speaks the covenant about every living soul, including all flesh, is in his covenant of peace, the very next thing we see is Noah going and picking the grapes off of the creeping vines and getting drunk. What we do not see is God saying, you can kill and eat every animal that breathes, and then Noah had a big barbecue. We just don't see that in the Bible. So uh, I told her, I said, actually, no, it's, it isn't in the Bible. Genesis 9, 3 says, I give you the creeping things just as I have given you the green herbs for food. And then verse 4 says, but flesh with the blood of life, with a soul you shall not eat. And then verse 5 says, and I will demand your life for every creature you slay, life for life. That is the actual, original, literal Greek and Hebrew rendering of those verses. And she just says, well, I didn't know that. And I just smiled and I said, well, that's because man translated it with the viewpoint of eating animals to support the idea that God said we could eat the animals. But since eating plants heals us and makes us healthy, God knew this, and that's why he told us to eat the plants in Genesis 129, and then again in Genesis 2, verse 9, Genesis 2, verse 14, 15, and 16, and then again even after the fall, after Adam's disobedience, God still tells Adam to eat from the ground what's grown from the ground. And that's going to be Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. But now think about this. And since eating animals make us sick, and eating their byproducts makes us sick, this means that it was our idea and not God's idea. And that's kind of how I left it with her. Now, I do want to point out one more thing to you before I let you go. If we're going to claim that God told man that they could eat the animals in Genesis 9-3, I would like to ask you to consider one question. What is Moses doing taking away what God said in Genesis 9-3? You can eat any living animal. All the animals of yours just kill and eat any of them you want. What is Moses doing changing and pulling back and restricting what God had put in place in Genesis 9? So I would propose to you that we have misread and been mistaught Genesis 9-3 because Moses would have been going against what God had already set in place if that was true. Because Moses restricted 
and reduced what people could eat, what they demanded to eat. Remember Numbers chapter 11 in the desert when they were mad and belly aching, murmuring against Moses and Aaron because they wanted to eat from the flesh pots. They missed eating flesh and all that God was feeding them was vegetation, the vegetables, the manna, the bread from heaven. A vegetarian died, and they're fussing and angry and mad, and obviously Moses won't let them kill any of the animals. And so Moses goes to God and says, Hey, you got to help me with these people. I don't know what to do about them. So God uh, actually gives them what they are murmuring about, and uh, they have this huge flock of quail, and they and the Bible records that uh, the fle they died with the flesh between their teeth, from a plague and was buried in the land. And the land is called uh, the land or uh, the burial of lust, uh, the land where they buried people of lust. The flesh eaters of the Israelites did not make it into the promised land. The ones that uh, was craving and belly aching and murmuring and demanding flesh died from a plague. And then the vegetarians are the ones that got to enter into the promised land. That's just an example of one time that God tried to turn his people back to living a vegetarian lifestyle the way that he directed us to in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. Okay, And we'll see later, if you keep looking in uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verse 6, and Isaiah chapter, I believe it's verse, uh, chapter maybe... 25 verse 36. I'll list it in the, uh, but in Isaiah we see where ultimately the new earth will be vegetarian again, that all the animals and all people will live in peace, okay? So we'll all be vegan again uh, in the new earth. Uh, so I guess you know what? I'll call this a wrap up. I just wanted to tell you about my experience that I had this weekend. And I, you know, for me to teach biblical vegetarianism, uh, it has required me to spend a lot of time investigating uh, Scripture inside the 66. I call it the limited 66 edition because when that's all we read is our limited 66 edition King James Bibles, we have a limited understanding of the Bible because we're not reading the backdrop stories of Enoch, Jubilee, and Jasher to understand these early books of the Bible uh, in Genesis, like the, the all about the uh, eating of flesh and stuff. If we had those writings still included in our Bibles, we would understand it more clearly is what I'm trying to say. So I have spent uh, many, many hours, uh, over three and a half years, and I'm still finding things and studying. And uh, But I want you to know that, you know, this has been a learning process for me. I, I'm not trying to condemn people. I'm trying to educate people because I do care. I care about you. I care about your health. I care about your loved ones. I care about the animals, and I care about the earth. And I think that's a very godly approach for me to care about all things, all creation. Uh, and that's why I do teach living a vegetarian, plant-based lifestyle, guys. It's the very, very best. It's what our bodies thrive on. Uh, all of the research is out there if you will take your own time to go investigate that and learn more about it. I'm not asking anyone to take my word for what I'm telling you, but I am asking you to go out and study for yourself and prove these things are either true or false. Okay? Well, listen, I'm going to sign off. I love you, and I will see you here again tomorrow. Bye-bye.